Hello there and welcome to A Revna Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang and this is the fourth episode entitled A Manufactured Anointing. This one is going to be a very uh, interesting topic unlike the previous ones because it is based a little bit more on <clears throat> um, I suppose an assumption of what I feel anointing oil may be. It's a bit different from the previous topics we've got into in the past about the biblical verses of the dead rising of Christ, both tying that into what many of the prophets have been saying, as well as last episode called The Good Tongue Lashing, which is based more on just verses in the Bible specifically regarding speaking in tongues and kind of a decipher of what that may be and why we need to do it. Um, and of course, it's not for everyone, but, um, you know, if people pray, then I suppose <clears throat> giving in tongues too is probably another recommendation that somebody may want to try out. Another thing that we may want to try out as well is this, which is the anointing oils. And you got to remember is that a lot of this stuff I'd say probably <clears throat> maybe oh six years or so ago, um, I I had an understanding about all this and and it was kind of sort into it, but also not really. I lived in Redding, California, and for those of you who know where Redding, California is, this is also where Bethel was. Very controversial school and church um, where they they do like certificates for speaking in tongues and becoming a like minister for the Holy Spirit and using your gifts and stuff like that. And it, it was uh, I never went there myself, but I've heard a lot of people talk about it, and I can understand why people are very insecure these days about stuff that involves gifts of the Spirit because of schools like this. And there are some prophets that I listen to who are for Bethel, and there's some that I listen to who are against it. There's many churches that I've been to that are for it, and many churches that are against it. I, I've, I've talked to both sides, and I'm neither here nor there, but I, I, do, I do pay attention to some of the things which they do say, and I do understand why this is such a topic of great concern, because you never really it's it's hard to have good discernment on these topics and i'm trying to go mainly off of what the bible says and then tie that into what is also being said prophetically as well as what i've seen in the natural to these things whether it's speaking in tongues or exorcisms or using anointing oil there's there's a lot of a lot of controversy on that and to be perfectly honest there's also a lot of controversy to prayer uh, i mean just the various ways to do it and what people think it it does and uh how it helps others and what they believe the power of prayer is so there's a lot of things a lot of topics that that are seem to be being battled or hashed out between various denominations and as somebody who's bounced around from one church to another because I just I don't see myself as being stuck in one particular denomination I uh, I try to pay attention to the pros and cons of each place and get an analogy and a discernment myself of how these things work and if it's beneficial to the body of Christ and for me if it's in the Bible and it says to do it then it should be beneficial for the body of Christ I, logically there's some people that think certain things are done away with these days such as prophecy or even speaking in tongues or, or, or healing this was all this was all during the Apostle times and that was it like no one else can do them so it seems kind of bland but also I was under the impression that God was no respecter of man and that we had our calling to do as well too and we've been putting a lot of these gifts on the back burner per se 
Uh, I wouldn't say not so much because we don't believe them, but because we think that maybe a lot of churches have abused them, and it's better not to touch them at all because of that. And if we delve into that, then all of a sudden we're, we're tampering with things which we shouldn't be messing with. Um, even though the Bible specifically says you, you should, you should, you know, at least try to look into some of these things. I mean, people say to pray, Christians say, you know, if I ask a Christian, you know, do you pray? Well, yeah. Well, why? Well, the Bible says to do it. Well, the Bible also says to do this stuff. And I'm not trying to force anything onto any particular denominations or bring in anything into other churches. I'm trying to take the bits and pieces from various churches that I've been to and kind of combine them into one thing, all the pros <clears throat> and removing all the denominational cons or just fluff that's sort of extra apart from biblical or apart from the word of God. And people can say that maybe speaking in tongues and prophesying and healing the sick and, and exercising demons is extra Bible, but it's not because it's there in the Bible telling us to do those things. In fact, Jesus himself said there will be others that will come after he does doing wonders, some even greater than he did, because he's going to his father so that the Holy Spirit can come down here. I'm going to pause this for a sec because my girls are opening the door. Okay, I'm back again because the girls keep pestering me to give them food before they go to bed. Dessert time stuff. <laughs> always, always joyous. Um, yeah, so there's, there's lots of things, uh, even as Paul said, you know, one man's junk is another man's treasure saying it lightly <laughs> but um there's there's certain things that certain denominations do and and that's fine um i'm not saying everyone should do this but i'm saying if you want to be in this warfare time that we are entering into which i've mentioned uh, pretty much in my first introductory video is that we need to be prepared and ready for what is coming. And some of these things are going to help you. They will be beneficial for the time that's at hand. And it's coming very soon. And it's gonna be upon us probably sooner than we expect. It wouldn't hurt to maybe start delving into these particular things. Now, I'm not one who really cares about what denomination I go to. I'm really not that picky. I try and go and figure out from each place the pros and cons and blend that into what it is that I'm trying to get ready for. And I could just as easily move into another place where they would teach these things better, but I don't really care about that because the minute that I do, there'll be something else that I will bring up that'll be controversial to them and then I'll have to move to another place, and then something else will be controversial, and then I'll have to move to another place. Because I'm not looking for a denominational house, I'm just looking to get insight into scripture, into my studies, into um, community, into prayer time with everyone, into studies uh, biblically with fellow Christians. Um, but anything extracurricular you know, that's within the denomination is kind of either a take it or leave it with me, you know, um, like I'll, I'll listen to what each place would have to say and I'll, you know, take it or leave it more or less. It was interesting because I was, I was at, uh, the Bible study at my church this last Wednesday and we were talking about, how interesting it is if like, you, you know, everyone took all the pros from different churches. Like for instance, uh, I, I love the Catholics, um, what's called uh, high church or the visual word as opposed to the written word, you know, all the, all the mosaics and the murals and the statues and the cathedrals and the stained glass windows and stuff like that and things that that i've really find interesting that that draw me into the creativeness and the awe-inspiring of man's hands to create for god uh a sense of worship and awe for him 
but then I also like Calvary Chapel where, where they go in and they study everything verse by verse and, you know, try and decipher everything from uh, Hebrew and Greek and sometimes even Aramaic. Um, and then I love the music of the Orthodox. Uh, <laughs> I keep getting this. I was laughing when we were talking about it because I keep getting this vision of this one comedian and I forgot who his name was. I'm sorry, but every time he makes a joke, uh, a joke of different denominations he always goes to the presbyterians with superior theology you know like he goes to the coffee shop and orders a coffee the presbyterian he's like how do you spell presbyterian he spells it out superior theology and just just that type of thing <clears throat> where you take kind of all the all the fun pros and you mix them together and you have this one unified church that just has all the good stuff and Everyone thought that that, you know, everyone's like, yeah, that's, that's great. Oh, I can't, I can't wait for that to happen. But in order for that to happen, you do have to take the good stuff sometimes and incorporate it in. I'm not saying put it into your own denomination, but when you start segregating into different things, well, that's not for us. That's for those guys over there. It's like, well, th then you are staying segregated. You're not unified. You're not taking the best because you don't want their best. You just want the best that you guys have and nothing else from them because that's the weird stuff. And I'm, I'm trying to take bits and pieces and sorry, I hit that. I'm not used to this thing being here. Bits and pieces from each denomination that I find useful and would help the body of Christ during this time. And believe me, I'm only on four. This, this series is going to have like 19 episodes maybe more because I, I can think of the last you know last couple to f maybe flesh it out to an even number um but so far there's there's going to be 19 and i'm going to end up offending somebody somewhere at some point about something because that's just what this is going to be um <laughs> offending people no it's it, it it's about unifying the different the different aspects of, of how we can use our Christian faith and become stronger and m more imbibed with the Holy Spirit. Um, and this one particular topic is going to be about anointing oil. And I never really understood all that much about anointing oil. In fact, I've, I've skimmed through a, a whole bunch of different verses within the Bible about anointing oil and stuff, but it doesn't really specify too much on the topic. Though, and this, again, this, this particular episode is going to be mainly based more off of my interpretation, tying into certain verses, and believe me, they're, they're hard to find in the Bible, um, and what some of the prophets have been saying today. And so this is, this is a completely winging it. Um, section. So just bear with me on this because I have no notes apart from just a handful of verses, which I'm going to be going into. And it, it does explain it some, but I think it's a different outlook on how anointing oil works. And I think I'm going to just go into that topic because it just, I, I have this, I don't know. It's like, I don't know if it's Holy Spirit speaking to me or it's just like, Lately, I've been getting a little little bits of nuggets of information and stuff that has been dropping into me. I don't know if any of you have who are watching this or watching any of the other prophets when they speak, like Julie Green or Daniel Larkin, Cat Kerr, Manuel Johnson, Hank Kuhneman, Robin Bullock, Amanda Grace, uh, Dutch Sheets, Tim Sheets, um, Nathan French. Uh, the list just goes on and on and on. Timothy Dixon and Midnight Cry with Deborah. I, I mean, for the past three years, it's just been an onslaught of these people getting prophetic download after download after download, and it's um, it's kind of kind of crazy how it it was just very small and, and sporadic. And then after 2019, once COVID hit, or once this this 2020 election hit, all of a sudden it was just like. A bombshell drop of prophecies among various people and it was it just it exploded <clears throat> and we've been getting from each person little nuggets of truth and then these nuggets of truth started to build up and 
they tie into other people's prophecies and it started to make sense. And then these prophets started to hear about these other prophets and then they started to have meetings and now they have these giant revivals. And there's one going on this weekend, which I'm going to post up in my links below about the reawaken America tour, which is going on in Las Vegas right now, where there's just all these prophets mixed in together with patriots like Mike Lindell and uh, Eric Trump and um, so many uh, patriots tying in with prophets now speaking about what's going on they're looking at the governmental aspect and looking at the spiritual religious aspect this thing's weird and um no oh, things are just tying in it's looking chaotic but it's starting to make a lot more sense and the more i watch and the more i pay attention the more i get words from the lord as well as listening to the prophets listening to the patriots listening to the government and the, and the judicial system the good ones at least that are aware of what's going on it's it's starting to all fall into place it's starting to get interesting um one of the things we have to do during this time i feel as well as many of the other prophets too is we need to take heed and take guard of everything that is going on in this day and age and that is to bear up as much as we can put on the full armor of god every single day it's something you just ask every day lord please grant me give me my spiritual armor for the day so i could overcome the trials and temptations i have against the wicked one and to stop his fiery darts and again before i go any deeper into the topic at hand this is a long intro i'm sorry we're going to take communion for those of you who want to join me. Again, I'll get into the topic as well of my communion uh, episode later on, explaining this a little bit more as well too. So but for right now, I know for some of you it may be hard to get to communion. I know it is for me sometimes at the congregations. So many things going down in so many sometimes different churches that I go to as well, whether it's with the in-laws or uh, various churches that I go to. A lot of times it's hit or miss with the communion. So for those of you who can't congregate all that much or maybe around the world that are watching and can't get out to do communion you're welcome here to partake communion with us myself and others who are watching now that we did heavenly father as we get into this topic which <laughs> the episode's about half over now but once we get into the topic please um give me the words to speak let the holy spirit come into me so i can emphasize this a little bit better and reach those who are interested in hearing this and become stronger and more ready for the days that are coming at hand so that they can become more heftier soldiers for you during this time as you turn the tables and we stand in agreement on your actions for what is coming in this last harvest season in Jesus name we pray amen I can add a brain freezer of where I was gonna go here so anointing oil I, I never really, I never really was into this stuff. Um, it's not like <laughs> I was never into this stuff. Then I tried it, and it's great. It's, I mean, I still never understood the process too much on what holy oil is, and I'm not sure how long this episode's going to be. It may actually be a shorter one because there's not too much to explain apart from what I heard from the prophets, <clears throat> especially that of. Timothy Dixon, uh, Amanda Grace, Julie Green, um, Manuel Johnson, and I'd say that's about it. Uh, I don't, I don't know of too many others that really delve into this too much. Uh, they, they may, but I'd say those are probably the top four that I've heard who've really gone into this. Maybe Midnight Cry with Deborah. I can't remember. I don't, maybe not heard too much, but. Timothy Dixon was was hardcore to this. We we need to put this kind of like that of the uh, times of Egypt where they put the blood of lamb over the doors and 
protect yourself, protect your house, protect your workplace, put it on your car, put it on yourself, anoint yourself, anoint your spouse, anoint your children. And plead the blood of Christ over your household that no demonic forces or activity can touch you or your family or your house or your possessions or your work. No ailments will come to you, especially during this time where another pandemic is going to be kicking off because it's coming. Mass mandates are coming back. It's it's. 2024 election is right around the corner. I guarantee they will start pumping up and ramping up the mask mandates again. It is inevitable. It's going to happen. But you must stand strong and defy and be like, I am I am not complying. I'm not complying with this. Bleed the blood over that as well, too. And anoint yourself. <clears throat> but the topic that I had on oil itself not just to say to do that but really to kind of emphasize and figure out what is it with oil biblically like why that and i have a little bit of notes here said so i didn't have any notes well i didn't I'm, I'm talking about bible verses and i took this off a particular site and it's it's got the verse in here but it's got just a little bit more which i'm going to explain and tie it in biblically, but as well as what some of the prophets have been saying today. And I'll just start reading right now. Maybe you could fall into place. If any of this is making sense to you guys, just hopefully you'll get those particular nuggets that you need. Oh my goodness, those are very dirty. I'm sorry. I got a smudge on it. I'll just do my best to read without them. During Jesus' time, heavy stone slabs were lowered onto olives. That had already been crushed in an olive crusher. Gradually, these slabs, the weight of them, squeezed the olive oil uh, out of the pulp, and the oil ran into a pit. There, the oil was collected in the clay jars. The image of... Gethsemane, on top of the uh, slope of the Mount of Olives where Jesus went the night before his crucifixion, provides a vivid picture of Jesus' suffering. The weight of the sins of the world pressed down on him like a heavy slab, pressing the olives into the basket. His sweat, like drops of blood falling, from the falling to the ground, as Luke 22:44 flowed from him like olive oil as it was squeezed out and flowed into the pit of the olive press. And an explanation of an olive crusher. The olive crusher was the stone basin used to crush the olive into pulp. You know, a donkey pushed in a horizontal beam. We've, we've seen this in probably old movies and stuff like that, which uh, would turn the roller in the millstone and would crush the olives, you know, and grind them down into the large basin, which turned them into pulp. An olive crusher was often placed in the cave where a moderate temperature improved the efficiency of the oil production. There's also a particular thing in oil production where it goes through like a refiner's fryer where all the impurities get cooked out of it. Hold on one sec, the girls are screaming again. Back yet a third time. Isn't that fun? Turns out the girls... Uh, one of my daughters stepped on the other daughter's leg by accident when climbing into a bunk bed and she started screaming. So that was fun. And then the wife came home from her errand and she wanted to watch a show. So we did that. So now I'm back here again, finishing all this up. So, and I believe where I left off last was with the pressing that Christ was going through and dripping of blood and almost as if he was being pressed as the olives would for their oil. And there is also a verse that we go through as well in 2 Corinthians uh, 4, 8 and 9, but also ties into 16 and 18 as well. And I can combine those two together to give this from 2 Corinthians 
We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. And I think how um, anointing oil or holy oil or even other stuff such as, um, I don't want to say the mystery of the Eucharist, but uh, maybe on the lines of holy water, how it works. Because I've blessed holy water before as well during an exorcism, and I'll get into that in another segment as well, the monster mashing one and the spiritual warfare, which is interesting. But I was always kind of interested uh, and sort of perplexed as to how holy water and anointing oil, holy oil, stuff like that really work. And from the text that I get here in the scripture, as well as what many of the prophets are saying of the pressing we are going through, not just the pioneer path that many of us are walking, uh, the path setters, the cave season that we are in, the isolation that we have been in, but the absolute intense spiritual warfare that most of us has been have been going through um if you if you haven't been going through it i i don't know even what to say apart from um either the devil just <laughs> doesn't has no interest in attacking you uh because you're not a threat or you're just not I don't know if it's not saved or what, but it, I, almost every Christian that I've talked to so far has been just absolutely under pressure and pressed during the spiritual warfare time. And I think how anointing oil works, and this is just my own interpretation, so take it as you will. I'm just giving my own two cents worth in, is that I feel through the prayers and the supplications and the pressing that we are in and the trials and the tribulations and the tears and all the th everything given to God, all the weariness and the tiredness and the brokenness that we have, it seems that that goes through the refiner's fire when it goes up to heaven. As the, the Bible says, he collects all your tears, he knows all your prayers, he, he has it there. Um, Many people, like the prophets have been saying, as, as of now, the, the bowls are filled and they're ready to be dispensed out again. And it's almost as if, as if he takes that pressing of the oil that we have through our suffering and refines it in heaven to be sent back down here as blessings. And whether that's through holy oil or holy water or through declarations and decreeing the answers to prayers. Um, I kind of have a feeling that, not to say that that is totally how it works, because yeah, nobody really knows any of the answers that, that to heaven that God really has, but it, it just, it feels that there's some sort of process that that's how it works. To him, it's a sweet fragrance. It's, a, it's, a, it's an anointing oil that goes up to him our sacrifices that we make towards him and then he sends it back down as a blessing to us which we can then use for our own necessities for our own like battles or um, healings or just the tools he gives us the tools to work into that through through these things um, and it just it is interesting how people like Manuel Johnson or Julie Green or Donna Rigney, and I think Amanda Grace maybe even, where they would go to these festivals or to these group um, church revivals, and they would bless people with anointing them with oil and stuff like that. They'd have a little bigger bottle than this, but... If you go to their videos and watch, I mean, they would even explain it and show it where they would be putting oil. I mean, and they'd be doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people with one bottle. They would, you know, anoint their head, bless them and stuff like that. And the bottle would just fill back up. And then they'd anoint some more and to rise back up. I think these are the gifts of God that he gives to us. 
And it's through the sweet fragrance of our suffering and through the trials and tribulations and through the prayers and the tears and through our weaknesses that he can use it and show on his behalf, his power and his might and his workings. Um, it's not through us, it's through him. Uh, and that we give him all of our pain and sorrow and that he turns it into something beautiful and uh, mysterious, but also useful and awe-inspiring and praiseworthy for him. And I can't really say in a sense that that's the same way as the Eucharist, as communion. I'm going to get into that in a different episode, but I, I feel that this is one of the reasons why we have such things as anointing oil and as holy water, <clears throat> which is used for our benefit for his glory, to show his might and his strength and his power, his rulership. You know, he is God. So, um, and I know this is probably getting a little bit later. It might be a bit shorter than my other videos, but it's kind of the route I was going with this. I just wanted to bring that up uh, as sort of kind of just a, a little nugget that I wanted to give to you, but also to mention that during this time when things are going to be getting darker and darker, I'm, I am going to be standing in agreement with what many of the prophets have been saying lately, and that is to definitely anoint your house with oil. Um, put it over the door head um, as protection of what is going to be going down lately. Anoint yourself, anoint your family, your business if you can. There's people that are going around all across this nation, and they're actually anointing the, um, the state lines and blessing them. And as a measure of faith that I have, especially with watching, as I said, with Manuel Johnson or Donna Rigney, Julie Green, where the oil fills up, it's obviously God that dispenses this holy anointing onto the oil and the refilling where it replenishes and never runs out. And if it's something that he's given to us from heaven, and I would say, if you can't get the state lines, if you can't anoint, then ask the Father to send angels to give you the holy anointing where your house is covered, where the lines of the states are covered and are secured and protected by holy anointing oil. Uh, that, that your family is blessed with that, that they're covered by the blood of Christ, which I think far well exceeds this, obviously, logically. Always plead for the blood of Christ first. Ask for holy anointing ask for God's glory, ask for protection. Um, but ask for it in the spirit as well, if you can't get any of this, or if you can't get to certain places which you feel should be covered by some sort of protection or by anointing or by the blood of Christ. And I guess that's where I'm going to leave it right now. It's getting kind of late. Um, I'm well past where I started hours ago because I kept getting interrupted and I just kept losing my place and forgetting where it was I was going to be mentioning but I'll leave it here I'll try and edit it up so it's not so choppy and not so messed up I hope you got a good um, some sort of nugget out of that that maybe you can find useful and helpful and again these are not things that you know you you have to but uh, in the times we're entering right now, it's probably a good idea to maybe start looking into certain things and start opening, expanding yourself up to the various things that God has been gifting you. The Holy Spirit has been gifting you. Christ has been telling you to actually do. Uh, the Pauline epistles you know, are telling you to do. It's just like it's like the Bible's telling you to do it. And it's like, you should be doing this. And it's not like, it's, it's not a you know, like a, a, a get into heaven, you know, recommendation. Like if you don't do it, you're not going to be saved or anything. Like that. It's just, these are, these are tools to help you during these times. And I think it's probably a good idea to look into them. And if you don't, then that's fine. Prayer always works. You have your faith in God and know that he's going to come through in it. But during this time, God also wants you to stand up and be active and 
take back ground from the enemy. We are entering that season uh, for the Billion Soul Harvest where they're going to be knocking down the door to try and get saved. And we better have answers for them. So, at least for some of us that are on the front lines, still weary, burnt out, confused, and figuring it out ourselves as well, too. I'm getting occasional downloads here and there from the Lord and finding new and interesting things in the Bible each and every day that, that just blow out at me that I've never seen before. It's like God is revealing new things in this time that I've never understood and I'm starting to get answers to it. And I always say that I never want to jump the gun and say that it's the Holy Spirit that's definitely giving me these things because I would feel bad if I wasn't correct on all of this. You know, and I'm pointing the finger and other people lose faith, but I'm I'm sticking to my guns on this and I feel something's coming just as many tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people across the world are saying and feeling the same thing. Something's about to happen and we need to be prepared for it. And that's why I'm starting up these videos. So I hope that helped. My recommendation for this episode for a speaker to listen to and it's a tough one because I'm sort of indecisive as of who to go to because there's a lot that I listen to almost on a daily basis. And I would probably say this time would be Julie Green with Julie Green Ministries. And I'll put a link down below. And my book recommendation, which I shouldn't really say is a book. It, it kind of is, but kind of isn't. It's the light. I'm sorry. Chuck Missler, The Book of Genesis. It's a commentary, but it's commentary in real one-player form, which means he's got all his notes when he does his lecture on here. You follow along and you read it and you study it. Um, but it also comes in MP3 form and DVD format. So it's he, he gives you all the notes that you could download as well to, to read it as you would a study guide or like a college book. So... It's kind of a book recommendation, but also a lecture recommendation, but also a, a video recommendation. It's just, I kind of like those, especially with my eyes going. It's getting harder and harder for me to read, so I've been switching a lot more to audios and lectures or like audio books and commentaries and stuff like that. It's been helping me out. But uh, I, would, I would go so far as to say that's a book because there's a lot of notes. Like it's it's a book worth of information in there pretty intense so definitely check that out if you can i'll link his koinoa institute where you can pick up those those lectures and those commentaries which are great chuck missler is a pretty good pretty good uh, at cracking codes bible codes and he's good at apologetics and stuff just yeah highly recommend him and i suppose that's it next week is going to be something a little different. And I should close by saying a uh, happy birthday to my friend Rebecca as well, a good friend of mine who's also my first daughter's godmother. It was her birthday yesterday. It seems every week there's going to be something going on, somebody's birthday or some sort of festivity or something that I'll mention because I think from here until New Year's, almost every week something's going on. So I'll try and bring that up, birthdays or festivities or whatnot that's going to be happening but the next uh the next one's going to be kind of a a tough one for me and it it explains the weariness i have because if some of you know me you don't you don't really know me as like this i'm a lot more energetic and talkative and you know spunky and stuff and uh, these videos for the first these first four ones i'm very lackadaisical and out of breath and just slow speaking and self to voice and sort of a, a, a weariness to me. And I'll get into that one because I think this next video is one that I'm definitely going to need prayers on. And I'll explain to you why it's called they will catch up. And it's just about the loss. I think that all of us have been going through, whether it's a close friend, a close family member, a spouse, someone that you hold dear to you, or many people that you hold dear to you. Like there's been just an, an annihilation of relationships these past couple of years of nobody speaking to anybody anymore or just thinking people like me are just outright crazy. And the Lord spoke to me on it saying they will catch up, but it's also I think this is my my biggest doubt 
that I have in all of this. And there's a lot of things that I do believe in, but I think this one is my biggest one, and I will get into that next time. So if you do watch, uh, please pray for me on that, because that's I think that's the biggest trial and tribulation that I have in all of this, is that situation. Um, hopefully these first three videos kind of gave you fun little things to chew on, scripturally and biblically. Um, even if you don't believe them, it's just kind of an idea to bang around in your head for a little bit. So until next time, stay strong in the Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. I hope somebody got at least a little piece of nugget in my random speaking and the constant running out and cutting a clips that we had that they do find some truth and some, some trust in what I'm saying when speaking about you, that you get all the glory and you get all the praise for what you're giving to us, especially with these tools that we have and the turning of the tables that you're about to do, that we stand in faith and in agreement with what you are doing during this time. And that hopefully these videos help someone out, at least one person, if not many. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And I guess that's it. Uh, I will catch you next time. It is very late now. I got a lot of editing to do before I get this out tomorrow. So all of you take care and God bless.